Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham Insurance and Financial Services. This show focuses on sharing good news and powering the good in our community. Now here's your host, Andrew Bartolotta. Welcome to the City Current Show, where we bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good in our community and around the globe. I'm Andrew Bartolotta, and today we're honored to host Ephraim Erevru, a world-renowned artist whose collection, The Naked Truth Art Project, paints a canvas of stories of untold injustices unaddressed and the challenging aspects of race relations and socioeconomic history. Ephraim's journey from the vibrant cultures of Nigeria to the historic streets of Memphis has been one of passion mirrored in his dynamic artwork. And his latest collection of over 150 pieces is a testament to the power of art in fostering dialogue and connection. Ephraim, thank you so much for coming on the show. Talk about your journey from Nigeria to Memphis and now unveiling the Naked Truth Art Project. Thank you for having me. Uh, My journey from Nigeria to Memphis is really a very funny story because uh, as a kid growing up in Nigeria, and many other, uh, many other of my co- uh, students or uh, friends went to a very elite high school. And the expectation from that is that once we graduated, we will become the doctor, the engineers, the lawyers that they expect us to be. However, I was a disappointment to my parents because I chose to become an artist. And art is at the bottom of all the profession you ever want to be growing up in Nigeria. So in order to escape the pressure of all that was coming at me, I decided to run away. And to run away so far away that it would take you a two days journey to get to me. And that's how I landed in America. (laughs) So talk about your passion in the Memphis area and the work that you've decided to um, unveil with the Naked Truth Art Project. And then 150 pieces later, here you are telling real rich stories of America's history in a way that is starting the conversation for those that may not uh, learn about it on a daily basis? Well, arriving in Memphis, uh, the one thing that pulled me to do is two things. One, I got admitted to the Memphis College of Art. Um, and two, the Mississippi was a big draw for me. As a kid growing up, I learned a lot about geography and some of the biggest rivers in the world. And the Mississippi River was one of those rivers we studied. And so when I knew I was coming to Memphis, I was excited because, ah, Memphis is right on the Mississippi River. So uh, getting here, however, was so disappointing when I went downtown and saw how dilapidated every building was. And I go, whoa, this is such an, um, such a beautiful river, but they're not taking advantage of what they have, you know? And that uh, spurred me into thinking about uh, creating something uh, for the city, which eventually became the Art District of South Main or the South Main Arts District, which took us about four years to do, but it took time to get there. Uh, and we know what has happened downtown with all the revitalization that's taking place. But we really spent some time trying to convince city leaders about really looking at uh, using the arts as a way of drawing people to a space. So many years ago, when I bought my building on South Main to house my studio and my gallery, uh, one element that I wanted to also bring into the neighborhood were uh, galleries, other galleries, other artists, and um, restaurants and special boutique stores uh, but it was a very tall uh, proposition because people really didn't respond the way I thought they will so I opened my own restaurant okay. and uh, have no background in restaurant but just to show people that it can be done 
And it turned out that my restaurant became a destination point such that New York Times did a story on me. Uh, Chicago Tribune did a story on me. And people were coming from New York with the article looking for this, quote unquote, island oasis in the middle of nowhere. And that was my jingle on the radio. And uh, also it caught the attention of, uh, of uh, Morgan Freeman, who was at that time looking for a location in Memphis to celebrate his 15th year wedding anniversary. And once that, that uh, event took place, because we had all these limousines that packed in front of my restaurant, the rest is history. People started pouring in and, you know, uh, you know what happened after that. So that is the history. That is the history I have with the city. So moving forward, after Ferguson in 2015, there were a lot of rioting that was happening all over the camp, all over our campuses in America. And I had a great friend and a collector and the CEO of Sedgwick Insurance Company, Dave North, who happened to be on the share with on, on the share with uh, the university at the share with the University of Memphis. And at their board meeting, they were trying to see how can the university fend off uh, this uh, interracial issues that were going on in campuses. And my name came up and a meeting was set up for me to meet with the then president of the university. And we met, and that is how this project actually started. After meeting, they asked the question, how can we use the arts to at least ignite conversation? Because what is happening, we're not talking to each other anymore. We talk at each other. And it seems like things are getting worse and worse and worse. At some point, I mean, the lid is going to be blown off, you know. So um, we met, and um, eight years later, I have 150 pieces of artwork that now we call the, the Naked Truth Art Project. But it started from a meeting that took place, and the rest is history. And I love that you not only coming from Nigeria to Memphis and then taking such an entrepreneurial mindset to say, I'm going to make the difference. I see the, I see the potential in the downtown Memphis arts district, South main arts district, that area to then cultivate a community where artists can thrive across those socioeconomic uh, barriers that may be in place. And in the South main arts district, you have, these incredibly historic buildings and, uh, and, and organizations. You also have the National Civil Rights Museum just right there. And so a lot of the conversation around the Naked Truth Art Project is all about race relations and, and really pictorially showing it through your artwork. So talk about a particular piece within your collection that holds a special meaning for you or message that you say, out of 150 or so pieces, this is the piece that I am so proud of that really represents the Naked Truth Art Project. Oh man, as an artist it's hard, but there's one piece that I connect with on a personal level. And that's the piece I titled The Cancer Within. I'm a cancer survivor. As a cancer survivor, the first thing that happens when you're told you have cancer is denial. Then reality sets in. Then reflections. Then action or plan. A, an action plan writer, then of course action in that sequence. And I equated that experience to what is going on right now in the country as far as race relations is concerned. There has been a cancer in this country and that cancer is race. And this is something we don't talk about, don't want to talk about. and. What is happening is, as a cancer survivor, when I decided to take an action, I am speaking to you because of that action I took. Okay? So I'm alive. 
and survived. Now, there are those who may decide, no, that's not the route I want to go. I'm just going to figure it out. And they wait, and they wait, and we know what could possibly happen. It's the same thing with our issues in this country. Hate has become, and and um, I call it a cancer. There's this hate in this country that is literally tearing the country apart. And we are not, as a people, we seem to have resigned ourselves to all that is going on. Like we become so helpless. Think about all the mass shootings taking place in this country. It is unimaginable that someone can work, walk into a school, a classroom, and kill babies. And then we send our thoughts and prayers and we give every excuse in the book. And then we wait for the next shooting to take place. We have become what I call prisoners of our own freedom. And I created a piece within this collection titled American Exceptionalism. America is an exceptional country. That's why so many people come down here. That's why I came. The opportunities are here. But with that exception uh, mindset is the same uh, thing that is eating us up. The freedom to bear arms. That's true. But with freedom comes responsibility. So I have this piece where I try very hard to rise above the fray of politics because the moment you begin to bring politics in, everybody cramps down and everybody go to their own little villages. Yes, and, then yes. they, and, then, and then the squabble begins. It's about how we can live in a melting pot together, learn from each other and celebrate our history or recognize our history, celebrate the good and know that we should not repeat many of the things that we continue to repeat because that history is not woven into a lot of the educational fabric. What role do you see art playing in educating and shaping perspectives on history and social justice? Very, I call it practical role uh, because history could be very, um, how was the word? History could be very uh, boring. It can. Okay. And uh, and students, I see most of the time talk about history. They, you might capture their attention for a few minutes and then they're gone. So how can we infuse what they enjoy doing? Uh, rethink, rather, rethink the way we teach history. And how can we do that is what I have tried and struggled to do with this collection. It's infuse the history into the art. So what I'm doing is very, very unique. I've really had time to think through this. One, I have also started a poetry night at the gallery where I solicit poets to come view the collection and let each poet um, um, connect with a particular piece that they really feel connected to and go and write a poem or a story or their own story or some performance around that piece. I also invited musicians to come and meet with these poets and look at their performance or their story or their poem and write a soundtrack around that. And let's have a performance. So taking the art from a two dimensional uh, space to the theater, to music, to dance, to poetry, to the street, 
this is the practical way I feel we can really get young people engaged in these stories that I'm trying to tell. And I love that you're making it interactive and immersive because like you said, that helps people both understand and appreciate the art even that much more, but also um, understand the lessons learned throughout it and what it represents. You have a, another immersive element to the Naked Truth Art Project, the, the tile project that you have uh, extended off of this as well. Talk about that and the QR codes that um, you're going to have a place to cross America and your goal there, and then how people can um, see the art for themselves. That is the biggest of the biggest of all, right? <laughs> it's the most expensive undertaking I've done. Each tile is costing me 300 and something bucks to manufacture. And the reason why it's that expensive is because they want to make sure that it stands the test of time. So with traffic and weather, you know, they, they guarantee me that it will be here for a hundred plus years. Thank God, I won't be here to see if it's, that's not true or not, right? <laughs> so, however, those ties have been manufactured in Italy as we speak. And hopefully within the next month or so, they should be here in Memphis. We're gonna launch the tie project right here in Memphis. And because I'm right in front of this National Civil Rights Museum, and behind me is the nonprofit called Facing History and Ourselves. And what a partnership that will, that will be. So I spoke with them. They are excited about this project. So the goal is to use Memphis as a launching pad for a global uh, uh, spread or launch of this project. So as we do Memphis, my goal is to bring city leaders in because it becomes a tourist attraction. People are gonna come and, and walk this walk of history, as I call it, and learn as they go. It's right in front of the National Civil Rights Museum. So it's a, it's a continuation of what the National Civil Rights Museum is trying to do. Okay, and then hopefully my goal is that other cities begin to see the need to implement this way of connecting with people. And of course, as I was doing this story, I'm from Nigeria, something hit me. As a Nigerian, when I first got here, I knew nothing about this, these stories. And they're right here in my face. There's so many times I've driven past the plaque at Patterson and Third that tells about the Memphis Massacre of 1866. It wasn't until I started really working on this project that I discovered that. And it is right behind me. So and as I thought about this, and I said, talking to people locally, do you know anything about this event that took place in Memphis, almost 90% of people in Memphis did not even know. On both sides, black and white, okay? And I saw, wow, no wonder we fight it. We don't know our stories, okay? And then I had to also look at myself. I come from Nigeria, prior to coming down here, I have no clue about the National Civil Rights Museum, the struggles that Black people went through. These were my ancestors. These were the people that were shipped from Nigeria here. Their stories have never been told even back in Nigeria. So I have connected the dots. I'm taking this story back to Nigeria in two weeks. So what they have decided to do with this, I published a book, by the way. So I have the book, the Naked Truth Art Project book. And I shipped a dozen of that to Nigeria last month. And what they want to do, just like you do with me, is a syndicated radio talk show 
where they want to uh, have the book preview for 10 episodes, but they want to do it with the U.S. Embassy as a sponsor. And then when I leave Nigeria, I'm going to Rwanda, I'm going to Tanzania. My goal is not to take the struggle of my ancestors that came to America and the Americans back to Africa and say, hey, this was what your ancestors went through in America. Because most Africans don't even know these stories. So I was able to connect those dots. And so this project has really um, been what I call a mission for me. And I feel so wonderfully blessed uh, to have been given this opportunity to actually use my art in a way that I never thought I would ever do. Where can people go to learn more about the Naked Truth Art Project, support your efforts, and hopefully bring um, the Naked Truth Art Project to their city? They can go to Naked Truth at project.com. And be sure to follow Ephraim as well as he goes globally to share this very important art with the world. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me.